Hello again from Sparks, Nevada. I was thinking today about the time I spent in Afghanistan, and I know I look a little bit rough. I've been deep, deep into the funnel building process today, and well, it's taking its toll. But I was thinking about when I was in Afghanistan because I was considering tools, and while I was over there, the person that was in charge of buying tools was looking at things from a point of view that wasn't exactly the best way to do it. Wanted to buy the cheapest thing that they possibly could. I get that idea, but as a mechanic, you understand that there are certain tools that do a certain job and you, you've got to actually have the right tool for the job because it makes it so much easier and sometimes it's the only thing that makes it possible to do a job. Well, the person that was in charge of buying the tools and wanted to save all this money would buy things based only on price and not being a mechanic and not having an advisor didn't know what tools to buy. So in a particular instance, I wanted needed an 18 inch adjustable wrench a specialized wrench called an automotive wrench it's like a pipe wrench only it doesn't have teeth on the jaws it just it's flat like a regular crescent wrench so i need an 18 inch automotive wrench and that this is why i told them i said you got to order it well an 18 inch automotive wrench like the one i wanted if you get a quality one it's going to cost you upwards of 100 maybe 150 bucks depending on where you buy it and this was back then and they had to ship it and also the price might not be exactly that if you happen to be a tool guy <laughs> and know this anyway they order the thing and it comes in and it's a 12 inch well, the difference between a 12 inch and an 18 inch is the larger one's jaws open much further and they'll fit on a much larger nut, bolt, whatever. So the one they bought, even though they saved 50% on the cost of it, they really wasted the entire amount they spent because the jaws on that particular wrench would not open wide enough to do the job that I needed it to do which of course puts the job far behind schedule. It can't get done. People are freaking out about it and I gotta find another way, which is to go someplace else and borrow a wrench. <sighs> anyway, when it comes to your marketing business, it's the exact same thing, except it's much easier to go the other way. Meaning, you might have a tendency like I have and like many people have, to spend too much on your tools and not enough on the foundation, which is the education that you need in order to make the tool work. And there's always a learning curve. There's always gonna be a bunch of time that it takes to figure out how to make the thing do what you want it to do, which is why I'm a big proponent of hiring people to do things for you. I've said it before, I'll say it again. And a self-employed person creates a job for themselves and an entrepreneur creates jobs for other people. And what that means is you're the, you're the architect of everything and you, instead of buying all the tools that you need, maybe it's better a lot of the time to get the education first. And as rough as it sounds, you're much better off taking six months studying stuff before you even do anything than to just jump right in. And I know they say jump off the cliff and build your wings on the way down and you know, put it out there and fix it as you go. All those things may be true, but they're talking about people that have an inkling of what they're doing when they start. Because if you jump off the cliff and you don't even know what a wing looks like, let alone how to build one, you're probably gonna crash and burn. I know because I've seen me do it. So here's the idea that I want you to keep in mind. Every week you spend digging deep and learning about what you want to do before you launch it is going to save you 
a month, three months of work and time and expense in the future. Be careful where you get your information from, but make sure that you study it and then do it as you go, just like school. You read the chapter, discuss it in class, you do the exercises, that type of thing. It's the way that you've been trained to learn. It might not be the best, and you can adjust as you go along, but for, for right now, especially when you first start out, that's the best way to do it. So, number one, make sure you're not getting the latest, greatest whiz-bang tools that you don't know how to use and you're paying far too much for what you really need. Two, do one, one hour of study for three hours of exercise, meaning, you know, carrying out actions so that you can learn it more. And when something's not working, always go back to the basics, go to the foundation, start from there, because that's normally where you're gonna find something that's missing. You got it? <laughs> that's what I got for today. And if you're looking for the foundation of things, how to get things running, Get the link on this page. I can steer you in the right direction. That's all I got for right now. I'll talk to you tomorrow. I'm out.